back or something, or Io Ursa. <clears throat> There's no way they give up Io Tiny for the final game. They're gonna go Magnus. Magnus Io I'd even be fine with. They're not gonna give Io Tiny, are they? Already giving up Tiny. They banned Undying instead. Uh, let me move my webcam, by the way. PSG LGDs. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's a. Uh... I mean, now the question is, does LGD, are they like, wait a second, they're giving us IO Tiny, do we actually take the IO here? I mean, Tiny alone is fine too, right? Like, Tiny's proven to be a very, very good carry this event. Uh, I know Lycan Tiny is also really interesting, with, uh, or Lycan with the, so he has that shapeshift ability. His Aghanim Scepter, though, uh, it allows him to bite a teammate and turn them into a wolf as well. We called it. I'm learning things! The Lycan Tiny is coming out. So they don't go the IO, but I actually, I, I love it though. The Lycan Tiny I think is is also just as powerful of a combination. Um, again, the, the Lycan, he gets the axe, he bites a teammate, and he turns them into a wolf as well. So they get all that movement speed. And on top of that, they get it's like 30% lifesteal. For a hero in Tiny that's just already hitting super hard with the log as a core, it is a powerful combination so yikes yeah that's a yikes for team spirit so far to give out the tiny pick alone and they end up going tiny like um so but yeah so spirits like going through now like they gotta ban support heroes now because yeah they obviously tiny like it are very likely both gonna be cores i don't see them going tiny like it and then being like oh we're gonna run a support tiny like that wouldn't make any sense that is the one really vulnerable thing to this draft right now of LGD. It's it's pretty obvious what they're doing with their two cores early on. Um, so I suppose what's the answer to a tiny Lycan combo? I guess stun lockdown's pretty good. Uh, single target stuns in general. Bane's already decent. Uh, shadow, something like a Shadow Demon save wouldn't be too bad, I, I would think. Um... Like, they have to ban Io, right? Like, is Spirit not going to ban Io in the second set of bans? There's no way. Scepter Naga. Uh, that, you know what? That's actually not horrible. Tiny is, I guess, okay at taking care of Naga with the illusions, but that's not a bad option. I actually like the Naga pick, now that you mentioned that. Because, yeah, this, the Scepter, what that does, as we saw earlier, it allows the... Oh, no, they ban Naga. Never mind. Okay, well... <laughs> Never mind, not gonna see it. So. Doesn't even matter. Uh, there's a Tinker ban. Are they really gonna leave Io? Oh, I'm like. Uh, can Spirit really get away with leaving Io? Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. There's no way they don't ban IO here, right? Unless they want to try to get it for themselves. So they could, okay, so they could ban like something else, and they could pick IO and then set up for like an IO gyro combo on Team Spirit Size. So that might be the play as well. If you have any questions, guys, as far as, you know, what heroes do or whatever, you know, even more new focus, as you see, that's part of the stream here. Team Spirit, can answer to, pick. to the best abilities possible. So they ban Snapfire. <sighs> Again, the only way I see them doing this is if they pick IO. Are they really not going to pick IO? Oh, my gosh. Is LGD just going to snap IO? Conka IO right here. No? Okay. <laughs> all right we're not gonna see io at all okay but i guess both teams are just like we're not falling for that bait uh wyvern is pretty good against io to be fair because of the uh 
uh, the curse. So maybe that was like the deterrent pick as well. But yeah, Kunkka Skyrath. That's just a very confident couple of heroes coming out from LGD. Um, all three cores on LGD's side are much more beefy style cores. Ember Spirit coming out for Spirit. A uh, one that we haven't seen in the Grand Finals yet. But we have seen a lot of Ember Spirit throughout the tournament. Um... Shackles are great this game against heroes that you again want to run at you and heroes especially with Lycan with the Yags and Fighting Tiny. Um, that's a good tool to try to keep them in place the best th to the best of your ability. Now they picked it into a Skywrath Mage who has that single target silence. However, an early yields for Ember Spirit will likely be the answer there. What carry does Spirit get to finish it off? They ban Lifestealer. Yeah, that would have been a pretty good one actually. Um, Ten seconds remaining. Is there another carry that's really good here? A Spectre is still on the board. Five seconds remaining. Suppose I can see Spectre. Um, Terror Blade. LGDs turn to ban. I honestly, a Spirit going Terror Blade might not be horrible. Uh, Faceless Void is actually Ten another one, too. Remaining. Ooh, Faceless Void. I kind of like that now as well. Five seconds remaining. Team Spirits turn to they ban. ban Sven. Yeah, I, I think Faceless Void is really good here for Team Spirit, though. Um, or the Terror Blade. I actually really like Terror Blade as well. Terror Blade has a lot of armor. Um, so a lot of the physical damage coming out, not as susceptible against. Although there is some decent magic burst, I guess. Five seconds so remaining. maybe not. PSG LGD <coughs> turn to pick. <laughs> they ban ogre, oracle ogre bans. Yeah, ogre is something to just really ramp up. Uh, let's go. This vengeful spirit feels pretty good here as a, as a support. Please don't touch that. Ten um, seconds. Vengeful Spirit to amp up uh, the damage of these cores on LGD Five side. A save is also nice. Which they can use. Daddy? What? Daddy? Don't worry about that. You have enough toys, Adia. Adia? No, you have a lot of toys. You got all those dice as well. And you got your tablet still over there, too. Want to go back to that? Okay. No, it's over there. Okay, well, your tablet's right there, so you can play with the tablet still. Okay, we're almost done, okay? It's this last game. Then after, we'll go outside, and we'll play outside, and do more fun things, okay? Team Spirits, turn to pick. Enchantress. Enchantress. Team Spirit draft looks good with Magnus being a number. Yeah, stat wise, yeah, that honestly, those stats really don't. For game five of the grand finals against the two of the best teams of the tournament, like, I don't know, I'm not going to look at those stats and <laughs> necessarily give Spirit the edge because of that, but. Five seconds remaining. Because, of course, there's a lot more factors. Hedia, yeah, please don't worry about that, okay? You have plenty of toys over there. We've been over this. Uh, No, not right now. Because it makes too much noise, sorry. There's a Terra Blade. Okay, so they do go the Terra Blade. You know what? I, I felt pretty good this draft. I called both the Lycan Tiny Combo as well as the, uh, the Terra Blade carry in the end for uh, Team Spirit. Not too shabby. Um, again, Terra Blade makes sense because he's great in both the power buff, but also <coughs> a lot of physical armor. He can stand strong in these fights, but uh, the downside is that he is a little more susceptible to magic damage, magic burst, and which they have a bit of with Tiny, with Skywrath assisting. Konko's not bad at that either. Um, so it's kind of a give and take. Ten seconds but Terra Blade is also a really fun hero for the purpose of his life swap ability, which is his ultimate, a single target, where he essentially takes his life and is like here you can have it and he gives it to an enemy and or a teammate actually 
and he uses it on the target, and then he takes their life as far as percentage goes. So, for example, if he's about dead, like if he has like 20% life, and there's a, like Enchantress comes running in with 100% life to finish the job, Terra Blake can use the life swap on Enchantress, suddenly Terra Blake has 100% life, and Enchantress has 20% life. So, very good tool for turning things around. All right, here we go. Game number five. Get to see a terror blade. They get their Magnus again, though, too. Uh, team of the most Roshan kills. Definitely going to see LGD for that one. Their, their Roshan killing team is a lot better. Time of the first barracks destruction. 2030. Most D wards, Maposhka. Learn with the highest total magic and pure damage done to heroes at the end of the game. Um, magic or pure? Maybe Bane? Does, I guess overall, does Bane do a lot even as support? Maybe Tiny? Of course, there's Skyrath as well, but support. Yeah, let's go with Skyrath. What's different about the Dota meta or the hero that makes this suitable as a carry compared to the Pebbles and Han? So, the biggest difference is Tiny. Um, he has this ability right here, Tree Throw, where he literally gets to pick up a tree and it increases the damage done. It, it does 200%. Um, oh, excuse me, it doesn't do 200% splash damage, but. It pretty much it gives him a tree, and he gets to hit targets uh, in a cleave in front of it. It's a lot of upfront burst physical damage. That also is a great farming tool, but then you can also throw the tree for even more damage on top of it. So it's kind of like the Deadwood tree ability mixed in with the combo that Pebbles already has with the, t with the Toss Avalanche combo in this case. Uh, kind of like Deadwood, yeah. So, that like that ability alone is pretty much what makes Tiny much more of a position 1 carry potential. Compared to, uh... What you would see in Han. <sighs> Skyrath does a lot of magic damage, yeah. So we got the Ember Spirit versus Kunkka Mid... Okay, one, sorry, guys. Okay, when she comes home, she's not going to be home for a little bit, though, okay? Okay. You can show her when she comes home. Hey, you got your tablet? Yeah, your toys there, okay? <laughs> <sighs> I know, it was me. I know, it's... I've been dealing with, uh, baby CPK here. Watch again. She comes first, of course. 
I'm trying to hope she can be distracted enough in the meantime. Um, all right. So what are we doing here? Alpha Wolf. Okay, so yeah, Enchantress, she has this enchant ability, which not only when you use it on a hero, it actually slows them by a lot. They're at 55% movement speed slow. But it also allows her to take over jungle creeps with. Um, in this case, she chooses the Alpha Wolf for a duration, which uh, the Alpha Wolf, which dies right there. But it provides a damage bonus um, to teammates around, as well as it actually has this critical strike attack. That it has a possibility of do, but interesting combo right here, and it's gonna be enough damage. Collapse will get first blood. As a result, the courier, Tiny wants it. <laughs> uh, that's the other thing about the the tiny tree is that the tree gives him uh, plus two hundred attack range as well. So it makes him not 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 a full on range hero by any means, but he uh, he can hit a much further distance when he has the tree. So yeah, Lycan, no surprise, is going to Helm of the Dominator. We'll see him eventually get the, uh, I keep forgetting what the name is, Helm of the Overlord. Uh, going to go the Helm of the Overlord as well, which will allow him then to take over a, an Ancient Creep on top of providing that, all the aura buffs with the uh, Vladimir's offering that. It helps make it as well. Uh, Tiny is doing overall pretty good at this top lane, though. Mid and lane matchup, Wow. Kunkka is dominating the mid lane matchup right Radiance now. Curry. Remember, this was an Ember Spirit picked up into a Kunkka. So, I'm not sure exactly where this has gone wrong, but you even see Kunkka here is going to steal a little bit of the jungle. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. But, uh, yeah, Kunkka has a very good lead early on against uh, Toronto Tokyo. That's basically Luna's attack range, it kind of is, yeah. What's up? I see that. Small things hang. Great ones prosper. Yeah, that kind of gives you another idea as far as like how short attack range that Luna's attack really is, but Yeah, very good there. Now oh, you see Enchantress taking over the Wildering Ripper here. She it could, they can create this tornado. That she's using just to harass it. It's a very slow-moving tornado, but it will slow you if you're hit by it and does some damage over time. Bane is trying to kill the courier. Just out of range. It's not worth it. He's not going to get it, yeah. <laughs> Mira spending a bit of time running down the courier there, but just a little bit too slow, unfortunately. As Ember Spirit ports back to base. This is the cool thing about Ember Spirit, though, is Ember has this ability with his ultimate, the Fire Remnant, where he can put a Remnant down on the ground somewhere, and then he can teleport, as you saw right there, to the Remnant at any given moment, as long as he's not stunned. So, what you'll see these Fire Spirit players doing early, or Ember Spirit players doing early on, is, like we saw right there, he teleported back to base to use the uh, bottle, or to recover the bottle, to regenerate health and mana. He made sure he had a Remnant down, though, first. Uh, in the lane, and then he uses the Remnant to come back to lane. As there's the silence, though. Again, this is why the Ember Spirit pick. Oh, nice disjoint there. Just in time with the Slide of Fist. And meanwhile, Collapse is able to take out Enchantress in the jungle. Uh, but yeah, Ember Spirit can be a little bit slippery. The Slide of Fist, he basically goes off the map. He just starts jolting around like crazy. And he cannot be targeted. Even by AoE effects when he used the Slide of Fist. So he did right there. He timed it to where the ship was about to connect. And was able to activate Slide of Fist just in time. Uh, preventing him from getting hit by the ship. Uh, but yeah, Skywrath has this Ancient Seal ability. It's a single target silence. That happens to make them in take increased magic damage as well. But yeah, very good against a hero like Ember Spirit. But Ember is going to eventually get the Yules uh, eventually, I'm sure. Which does remove... Debuffs such as the silence as that shockwave missed there, but it's only a level one shockwave, so I don't think it was going to be a kill. Meanwhile, Terrorblade, though, the, the carry for this Radiant team, how Terrorblade works, has this metamorphosis form. It's basically a basic, it's a basic ability that essentially is an ultimate, as he's being run down here. And it's going to be killed. Um, but what I'm getting at, it's a 155 second cooldown basic ability. Like, holy crap, what the... 
What's the deal with that? Well, it turns him into this huge giant character that then he goes from a melee form to a ranged form. He does splash damage with his auto attacks. And, you know, it does a couple other things as well. Um, it also turns his illusions, which he's constantly creating with this Conjure Image ability, into the metamorphosis on top of that. So suddenly all these illusions in him are this big ranged form beast. And he can do a ton of damage with that form. But, again, it is a very long cooldown of 155 seconds. It lasts about 40 seconds up to 48. Uh, but when that's on cooldown, Team Spirit is likely not going to be looking for fights. All right. So yeah, Terra Blade. Um, and Sunder is the ability that I was talking about. The life swap ability. It's called Sunder in game. Doesn't have it leveled up yet. This is pretty normal at this point of the game. Similar to the Lunas that we've been seeing in previous games. Where just because you're level 6, they don't necessarily want to get their ultimate yet. Those points can be better value elsewhere. At least that's how they feel. Um, collapse is not going the full mech. He actually... So in the previous two games that he's played Magnus in the series, he went the mechanism first, and then he eventually went the blink. Changing it up this game a little bit does not go the mech. Instead, he wants to get the blink as soon as possible. That tells me that I think Team Spirit feels like they're a little bit behind early on. Um, they need to really create space for this terror blink. So they want to get Magnus the blink as soon as possible. Uh, to be able to do so. Again, it's what that tells me. The fact he's not, uh, he doesn't want to invest that gold into the, uh, into the mechanism farm. And I can kind of see why. I mean, we see another case right there as Kunkka's going to start roaming around more and more. And the impact that he provides just with his abilities. Lycan has the Helm of the Dominator. Is going the Helm of the Overlord. As expected. And he's going to start pushing more objectives. He's already pushed that first tower, which we've mentioned, and what that does. It starts to constrict the map a little bit for the Radiant team, in this case for Team Spirit. They can no longer teleport there, etc., as Ember Sphere is a little bit funky. Almost as if he's going to get pulled back, but he ends up remnant to the jungle, and he'll be fine. But here's the push. Uh, Lycan pushing this, uh, this mid lane. With the, with the creeps. Bane, meanwhile, is that... Uh, oh, that's actually terrible. Oh, my God, he gets out. Whew. That Terrorblade was actually going to get caught there, but Terrorblade with the Metamorphosis active. Oh, never mind. Thought it was in Metaform. They caught Mira. Okay, sorry. Well, it's a lot going on there. Um, Terrorblade has the Metamorphosis to use, but he gets away from the top lane. As it got a little scary up there. Terrorblade's farm is not the best right now. <coughs> As you see again, though, with the uh, with the Sleight of Fist, Ember Spirit is able to avoid. The X from pulling it back, but the tower goes down. Another tower kill for LGD, and the same situation, same point. As a result of that, is less map control now for his team spirit, and uh, they're, they're feeling a bit more constricted, which is great for LGD considering they're going up against the Terra Blade again. Terra Blade is a hero, one of these carries that he wants time, and we see right here. This is part of why, as he's going to take out what looks to be a triple stack Ancients. He goes Metamorphosis. He gets the Empower buff. And he's starting to do that now. One second. Um, but yeah, it's going to take out the Ancient Stack right here. <clears throat> and working towards that Yasha. Looks like he wants to build the Yasha into an Eye of Scotty. Okay. So, usually we would even see like a full Manta style, which not only creates more illusions, which... Terra Blade is kind of like the Naga Siren that we see before we talked about, where likes to create illusions, and what's great with illusions? Well, just raw stats. Uh, I have Scotty is a great item for that as well, as we've also mentioned. Satanic, another good one. Um, but usually we see the Manta style, because it also removes uh, debuffs on you when you use Manta style. So removing, say, the, the Silence, for example, of uh, Skyroth may not be a bad idea, but... Um, I don't know if he just feels like he's a little bit too far behind. Or the game's not maybe starting as, as good as he hoped for. But either way, it doesn't look like he's going to be going for the full Manta style here. Just the early Yasha for farm. 
But you saw that that was the that was a centaur from Lycan that he was using to harass the the Terrorblade with as he was farming over there. Oh, but man, Lycan is Radiant are scanning. again well on his way to that helm of the Overlord. And you can just tell the positioning from LGD that they they want to play aggressive. They have Tiny. He's got the Echo Tiny Saber now finished, so that double attack coming in, especially with that tree. This is where Tiny really spikes. He doesn't have his initiation tool yet in the Shadow Blade, but even right now he can certainly assist in some earlier fights. Um, might not be needed. This is an illusion here as it despawns, obviously. They can tell that was an illusion because they're smoked up. They didn't come out of the smoke as they got close to the Terra Blade, which means it's not the real hero. So if it was a real hero, they would become exposed, thus knowing that that's a real Terra Blade. Uh, they come exposed there, but they ping it out, and they're not going to find... Obviously, this is a fake one, as we know. And Terra Blade and Magnus will make their way out. So yeah, Magnus has the blank now. It's a good job by Team Spirit, buying a lot of time right there. Ain't able to escape. See Miposhka checking out to see what Tiny's doing. Him and Bane are going to hang out down here at the bottom lane. Fiend's Grip is ready. And Terrorblade's coming over. This will be interesting. I don't know. Can they 3v1 this time? Tiny is really tanky right now. 2400 life when he has strength power treads. So I don't know if these three heroes alone are going to be enough. But we're going to see. There's already TP support coming in. Oh, boy. Brain sap. It is enough. Oh, my God. That was just enough damage. But Terrorblade is in trouble. Oh, ho, 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 you got size. That was a Mystic Flare. If there's nobody else in there, it does a lot of damage on you. But he manages to stay out of it. Mira is out of there. Okay, it was a close call, but okay, they are going to lose Meposhka. But that is still so worth it. Oh, the curse. <laughs> Don't know about that curse right there. Gotcha. Onto the onto the Kunkka. You maybe thought the teammates were more nearby the Kunkka, but uh, that'll be a, a 75 more seconds before that's off cooldown. But again, still that trade is great because they kill the Tiny, who's that carry player on the other side. It's a top farm in the game still, even. Uh, it's a lot more gold going the way of Team Spirit than it is for LGD. Uh, including the Terra Blade, who continues to need a lot of power. <coughs> Ember Spirit did get the Yules, as expected. Again, he, he really needed that especially. It's already a great item on Ember because he uses a bit of mana with his uh, Slide of Fist ability to farm with. Searing Chains even, even the Remnants. Uh, and Yules provides some good mana regeneration. But it also happens to uh, give that Cyclone effect, which he can use on himself, to then remove things like the Silence of Skywrath. So, because Silence really screws over Ember Spirit, but the Yules will make it so he can get out of there still. <clears throat> Can't believe this is it, man. <clears throat> Game number five. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Uh, Magnus, so the thing with the shard, you can't get a shard, even though he has the gold for the shard, you can't actually buy the shard until 20 minutes into the game. That's a restriction they put on that item to prevent people from getting a really early shard, because frankly there's some heroes where the shard is a very powerful tool. And Magnus is one of those, they love that horn toss. But he can't get it until at least 20 minutes into the game. So you may be, you know, why is he just buying it? Because it's 1400 gold. He had like 1800 there. That's the case. You need to wait till the 20 minute mark before you can buy a Aghanim Shard. Uh, Shadow Blade finished on Tiny. So now he has this tool to, to initiate with and get in there. You see, again, the Shadow Blade it allows him to go in Fizz, uh, gives him some move speed, and allows Tiny to really get close to somebody to then pull off his combo of the Avalanche Toss, which. We'll see throughout, but he, he throws the avalanche down, which is all these rocks that come flying out that mini stuns you over time and does a lot of damage. And then you toss them on top of that. So that was the avalanche right there, but you toss them on top of that, and it does a crazy amount of burst damage. 
up front. That mixed with the, the tree auto attack damage and eventually the tree throw. Um, I mean, you're looking at a good 1,000 to 1,500 damage potentially, depending on the hero and their mitigation. Um, Tiny also is interesting too with this ultimate where it's a passive ultimate. When he levels it up, it's called Grow, so his his anime, his figure of the hero will actually get bigger as well, funny enough. Hence the name Tiny. He starts really tiny, but then he gets bigger. Uh, but it gives him a lot more armor, a lot more damage. It does reduce his attack speed, though. But again, for a hero that's really all about upfront burst damage, that's not necessarily a big concern. But we will see them start to pick up items like an Assault Kiros later on in the game, which increases their attack speed, puts minus armor on the enemies. Um... So, you know, maybe expect things like that to potentially come out eventually as well. Ember finishes his Maelstrom, by the way, which is an excellent farm tool for the Ember Spirit now. Man, LGD, I mean, they have a 4,000 gold. It's been slightly increasing, but I will say not a lot of kills. I, for this for this lineup, I it, it seems like that LGD is not getting as much action as they hoped for. Um, so despite the net worth lead, this is a team that's very capable of getting a lot of kills earlier on in the game, and they aren't getting that. Only four kills in 18, 19 minutes. Um, as I say this, they've smoked up Kunkka, by the way. He's got a Heaven's Halberd. We've already talked about that item. It's a great disarm against the opposition as far as their core goes, in this case, the Terra Blade. Uh, you disarm Terra Blade, and even with that metaphorm, he's not going to be nearly as useful. The RPN that's only on Skywrath. Terra Blade's coming in, I believe, but they kill the Wyvern. So an eye for an eye. Terra Blade has joined the fight with that Metamorphosis 4. Putting the auto attack damage on the Kunku is locked down by the Fiend's Grip, but the damage is not nearly enough. Terra Blade's in trouble. Can he Sunder? Yes, there's that Sunder. He Sunders with the Tiny. They turn on the Kunkka. And now the turn as a team by team. Spirit of Cyber Spirit jumps back in on the midst of them. Catches them both with the Shackles. They take out Tiny. And the auto attack's flying into Y. Collapse with the final attack to finish him off. Lycan in the shapeshift form. It's wearing off in a second. He has to keep his distance. Meanwhile, back here, Collapse doesn't have fallen to Faith Beyond. That was the uh, minions of, uh, of Lycan able to get him killed, at least. But both Ember and Terrorblade stay alive. That was close, but that is the power of Sunder right there. If you do not stun lock him, he will Sunder a target, go to full life, swap lives, and suddenly that fight isn't nearly going as well for you. Big fight for Team Spirit. And now Terra Blade, he's progressing towards finishing an Eye of Scotty. He, he's going to be there before the next fight for sure. And he's going to work on a Satanic after that. So he's, he is going to start getting to a point where, dare I say it, becoming somewhat unkillable, it'll feel like. And, I mean, that was a really good start too for LGD. But you can just tell, as soon as they got him to Half-Life, all of a sudden Terra Blade turned around and was like, hey, I need to Sunder somebody. <laughs> And LGD tried to reset it, but they were fighting at the tower. And that's obviously a risky move, too. Magnus, Skewer. Horn toss into that Skewer, trying to get a free kill on the Skywrath. And it is. Horn toss is so good, man. At 20 minutes, he gets Horn toss. And. I've seen it now. Being used there. And they're going to go for Roshan. With, with Skywrath dead, that's one hero dead. That's enough for them. Um, not the fastest Roshan team. Empower helps, but without Metamorphosis especially, this isn't going to be going down too quickly. But from the looks of it, I don't know if LGD is going to stop this. They are currently blind on the map. I have their vision up, and they are pinging it. But unless they start making their way over right now, which they're not, this is going to be the Roshan. So we're going to see an Aegis for Terrorblade. Now again, I've had this Aegis discussion before. Uh, Terra Blade is one of these interesting heroes with the Aegis in that Metamorphosis, it's an amazing cooldown for Terra Blade. It's what allows him to be the late game and the carry threat in general in these games. Yeah, really but it's a very long cooldown. Again, 155 seconds. So if he activates that before the Aegis is used and then say he dies like in five seconds later, yeah, he'll come back up, but he loses Metamorphosis. And it's not going to be off cooldown. So you do have to be a little careful with how you use your Metamorphosis when you have an Aegis. And it comes down to what we'll probably end up seeing with the Terra Blade is he'll hold the Metamorphosis in a fight until the Aegis is popped. And then as he comes back up, 
He'll activate the metamorphosis, he'll activate his BKB, or he doesn't have one, I guess, but, you know, whatever else. Like, that's when then he'll use all his big stuff. So the first life, he won't necessarily be the biggest threat, but it's when he resurrects is when he'll become that, that god to be. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower. And there's the axe. Okay, so we talked about this with the draft. The Ag's a Lycan, he can now bite a teammate, which turns them into the Wolf, that shapeshift form, so they get that mobility, and they also get the huge lifesteal. He's going to use it on Tiny. He'll bite Tiny, Tiny will then get that Wolf form, and Tiny, for how hard he hits, there we go. He's going to turn into the Wolf, and now they're looking to fight with this. Terra Blade, is he going to get caught? Again, he has an Aegis. He's running, he's running, and he's fine for now. In fact, Enchantress caught up here. In the front. You don't want to overcommit on Enchantress, though. Collapse, he's waiting. Yep, there's a horn toss. Nice silence. It prevents the skewer. That was a big silence, because that prevented him from skewing and getting the kill. Double damage on Ember's Spirit. They're, they're, they're chasing this. <laughs> this Enchantress is finally going to be run down. So the whole time LGD spent just trying to keep Enchantress alive, now they don't have a shapeshift. Tiny no longer has shapeshift. And now, Team Spirit's like, okay, let's go. So that was great by Team Spirit with the way they played that. Oh, the offensive tip. You'll love to see it. Ember Spirit's almost got his own axe, which actually makes his fire remnants a lot more useful. Um, it increases the maximum charges of the ability, the cast range, the remnant speed. And it costs us mana, so it really uh, puts his remnants, which is his ultimate, those figures that we see throughout the map, um, puts them in uh, hyper mode. <sighs> Dare I? I don't want to jinx this man, but Team Spirit, they are looking really good right now. <laughs> they are... They are looking scary, and again, going back to just the lineups, I know they're still technically down to net worth. But this Terror Blade, you do not want to see a very farmed Terror Blade on the other side. And he is, uh, once he finishes that Satanic, he's, he's starting to really, really get there. The root of invisibility. Top lane. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Terrorblade pushing off this bottom. This is an illusion Terrorblade that's just pushing a creep wave. And again, that's just, you see one pushing middle lane. So these good Terrorblade players, especially now with the farm that he has, he's going to start doing this more and more. And it goes back to because of all the raw stats he has, his illusions are, are so much more difficult to kill. Now there's a Black King bar on Magnus. So he'll be immune to all the crowd control, including that Silence of Skywrath Mage, which we saw impact him in that last fight. Uh, we're coming up to 27 minutes, so one more minute we'll have the Tier 3 items dropping. It's worth pointing out. Oh, nothing to say. He's He used his exit himself, but they jump in, collapse, he gets the horn toss, pulls him back, the Fiend's grip, that's a dead Kunkka. The metamorphosis, you do not want to fight into it. Dead for 60. Team Spirit found a beautiful opening right there, even with the X. So what, what you'll see Kunkos do, as he did right there, the X marks a spot. You can also use this ability on teammates as well as yourself. So what a lot of Kunkos do, they'll X themselves somewhere like in the trees as he was, and he'll go out and feel, you can feel a lot more safer usually as far as pushing out a lane, and then eventually the X pulls you back. Right there, though, Team Spirit, they could see the animation, of course, and they knew that he was somewhere back in the tree, so they just jumped where he would have been, or what they thought, and thus we saw the end result as, oh my god, Ember Spirit goes in, and Skyrath just melts. Terror Blade is the absolute beast that any Terror Blade player would hope to, hope to be. He's got the Satanic, they push the tower, he's going to be working on the Manta next, so he is going to go back to that. Under attack. You want that again? Okay. Not 
your best effort. All right. Uh, so yeah, 27 minutes has hit now too, and that means those tier three items coming out. I believe we just saw the uh, Titan Sliver, which is actually a good one. In fact, it's terrible I picks it up. Uh, so what Titan Sliver does, it increases his base attack damage, magic resistance, but also his status resistance, which is that crowd control effects against him. So very good tool for him actually uh, to have. Meanwhile, Lycan has control of this Ancient Granite Golem, which, once again, does provide that 15% health buff. So good for the team, but yeah, we saw this combo again. These are the first two picks. Tiny Lycan, we, we've seen them try it a couple times, but we've yet to see the impact. Tiny, oh, they try to catch Ember, but he is just way too slippery. Okay. So pushing bottom lane. Chrysalis now in Terrorblade, so he doesn't go the Mantis style. Chrysalis, that's more attack damage, as well as a crit chance now. God, I don't know how Spirit can keep them. Like, even I feel like I'm, I'm like, nervous for Spirit and, like, almost, like, shaking. Like, in terms of, like, got so much money in the line and, and Spirit might actually do this. Just imagine how they're feeling. 18, 19 year old kids. About to be multi-millionaires. Especially after coming in with no big expectations at all. And that's a horn. Oh, he missed the charge. That's unfortunate. Oh, man. He missed the charge. The Fiend's Grip Mira. That's so deep, though. He needs to go for that. Disarm. Eventually going to wear off on Terrorblade, though. The Metamorphosis 4 and the ranged auto attacks. Nice save with the Cold Embrace on a Bane. Auto attacks over here. Science on a Terrorblade. But now Ember Spear flying in. Shackles him up. Going for the kill. And Cook. It really wants that kill. But at what cost here? He gets the kill and he remnants away. But now he's trapped. He goes to the left. Okay, that axe is doing work, baby. Why will survive, but Kunkka and Skyrath are dead. Look at Toronto Tokyo. He's just deep into the base. And eventually we'll remnant out the Metamorphosis. is going to wear off in about 15 seconds or so. But it should allow him to kill the tower. Those misses are hurting. There we go. The buyback on the Skyrath. That's not really concerned. The Kunkka is the concern. And he ain't buying back. He's out for 40 seconds. This is going to be the barracks gun. I think they're pretty confident that there's no buyback known to Kunkka. There's a skewer for the Horn Tots. That's going to be a dieback. 70 second dieback onto the Skywrath. And Team Spirit may just be doing it here against LGD. $18 million for first place. And they are so close they can taste it. Another kill. They're going to take out the Rax. Again, this isn't over at this point. But man, oh man. PSG LGD, where is the answer? The Lycan Tiny combo, the whole reason you pick it up is for the biting and the allowing Tiny to go off. We have yet to see it do anything this game. And it's just hard to believe that's going to suddenly change. So he doesn't have Metamorphosis for 55 seconds. So this is where if you're Team Spirit, let's not overstep, right? You do not want to fight without that, and LGD knows this. They're going to try to run them down. Kunkka is going to catch somebody. Looks like the Bane. Ember's going to try to save. Mira just TPs. Oh, he gets combat. Okay, that's not a big deal. Though. That's your support. Not a big deal. Team Spirit, can they retreat successfully? Everyone else? It looks like it. Yep, even a Wyvern's going to get out. The last second there. So, minimal damage done in response. Great getaway from Team Spirit. Yeah, it's, uh, especially with, with how much is on the line, you could see a team losing their composure right there. I thought for a second Team Spirit was actually going to try to finish the game. Whew, I was a little worried. <laughs> I was a little worried for Spirit there. Radiant are scanning. But no, good job falling back. And he gets a Silver Edge. What? what is so Terror Blade has a Silver Edge, which honestly is really good. The break effect is very good against Tiny and Lycan. And even Kunk, I suppose, it removes that Tide. No, it's not passing. Never mind. So Tiny and Lycan specifically. Oh no, Tiny. Oh no, Tiny! The RP, they want this kill! At any cost right here, the break on a Terror Blade, trying to go for the beatdown, the fight back, because you have to. Almi's like, wait a second, now I gotta run the science. That's not gonna matter against Terror Blade. 85 seconds, Tiny's out for. And why would they stop? They're gonna keep chasing. Lycan, shapeshift in seven. He's locked in place, though, with the curse. The slow from the auto attacks, the burn, and he ain't going nowhere. 
The shapeshift is ready, but it doesn't matter. Down goes like and no buyback. And Team Spirit can push. That might have officially done it. The metamorphosis is still up for 20 seconds. These racks are going to melt. You have a Kunkka Enchantress, and that's it. What do you do? Just go tier four. Finish the game. Oh my god. Team Spirit. They actually are going to do it. What is going on here? Enchantress? <laughs> I'm not sure what uh, what the plan is, but... She's here to cut them off, I guess. She's going to get the bounty rune, but... Uh, yeah. Tier 4 dead. They're just going to go. This is it. Five seconds. You got to distract. Got to try. That's a dead Skywrath. That's a dead Kunkka with the Phoenix. Get the kids. Stop it. Oh my god, the buyback on a Kunkka. Like in shapeshift form. Okay, so he doesn't have meta, but just beat the Ancient. They're not killing you. They disarm him. Oh, back door. The back door protection. That's what Enchantress was doing. She was cutting off the creep wave to get back door protection. So they cannot kill the Ancient now. And now they're chasing. Metamorphosis is still 45 seconds away. The break on Enchantress. Oh, that's great, too. And uh, she is going to live for now. Okay, well, she actually lived. That's pretty big. There we go. So, cut of the creep wave. That makes a difference, but probably not going to matter in the end either. Buyback a like it. He has it. Ember Spirit bought back after he died. Terror Blade, 20 more seconds before he has another Metamorphosis. Even in melee form, Terror Blade is an absolute beast this game right now. RP to Lockdown Tiny for a likely another dieback. Oh, he's trying. He's trying. He's holding his ground. The kite. Bane is trying to live. Nope, Tiny's dead. 96. Okay, he has a buyback. Excuse me. Tiny buys back. Oh, Kunkka gets out just in time. And the bottom creep wave. The Ancient once again. Do they go back in? Terror Blade has meta. They're not going to. Team Spirit says, why risk it? The game's not over yet. Let's reset. And just accelerate off this massive lead we have now. Eh. I don't know. With Metamorphosis coming back up, I kind of think they could have just gone back at a finish. But they're going to try Roshan. Oh, getting your team buyback all the bounty. That's a good point. Yeah, so I saw her control the bounty rune. That might, if that actually was a difference between them getting a buyback or not, that is really clutch. Wow. The rune of haste. <sighs> Kunkka coming in. Skywrath. He put himself in Viz. There's the BKB. Kunkka. He's just dropping with a fiend script locked in on top of it. And Kunkka's dead. 110 seconds. The Terror Blade in meta form. Ember Spirit, meanwhile, trying to shackle up Lycan. Never mind, Kenny's a cold embrace, so it's going to save Wyvern. Lycan can't go into that. There's Tiny. That's a Tiny. He got bit. And Toronto Tokyo got to be careful. Toronto Tokyo's dying here, Yules. Utaro's figuring out what he wants to do. Silver Edge starts to run. Roshan. Okay, Roshan still has plenty of life. Metamorphosis is going to come off cooldown soon. Look at the bottom creep wave push, by the way. The Dire team does have to worry about that. Somebody needs to TP back and defend this. Dyer's ancient is under attack. And somebody is. But that means now Lycan can't play around the Roshan pit. That's why I was just distracting. I mean, credit to LGD. They <laughs> they really are holding off here. For such a long time, and they're doing so many great things to make this game take a little bit longer. But again, it, it, it just really seems like it is too little too late. The obvious outcome is to be, and you can just see they smoke up. They're going for the Ancient. Now, Backdoor is going to kick in, right? Dyer's ancient is under attack. Or is that just it? Oh, Kill Skyrat GG. That's it. Team Spirit official. They're the champions. Oh, my God. Team Spirit takes it. I want to see the reaction. Oh my god, dude. It really is too bad there's no crowd there. You have your water. You know where your water is, Eddie. You know your water.
what a road it has been. They take that fanatic OG VPIG secret. And now in the best of five at the grand finals, the international 10, they defeat PSG LGD. Arguably wow. the favorites coming into the tournament. Absolutely. And they don't just defeat any PSG LGD. They beat PSG LGD playing their best draft. I like how Insania went from not even being a caster at this event to now casting the finals, the grand finals. That's great. This was the most dominant combo of this tournament. Yeah, like in Tiny. And even with that, it, it didn't matter. Wow. Unbelievable. Leading the boys to the championship title. Hey, dude, don't press buttons. I know, we're almost done. It's unbelievable. I, I know before this Idiot. tournament, I was streaming and people would ask me like, where do you think Team Spirit are going to place? And I honestly said, on a good day, if everything goes away, maybe top six. I never saw this coming. Not in a million years. Yeah, nobody did. Anyone that says they did is complete liars. What a road, what a dream, oh, wow. and they've achieved the spirit. Wow. 